I am Dr. Kailash Mali and we will discuss the oral absorption, solubility and dissolution. So the learning objectives for the today's session, students will able to define solubility and dissolution. Student will able to explain theories of dissolution. Student will able to understand factors affecting to dissolution. So these are the learning objectives. Let us move towards the oral absorption. So what is a absorption? So absorption is a process in which the drug moves from route of administration to the systemic circulation. During this movement, there are two important rate determining states are there or which are the slowest states which decides the movement of drug from site of administration to the systemic circulation. So very first step that is the dissolution of a drug from the dosage form and the second rate determining step is the permeation of a drug from the membrane. So the dissolution rate limited, some drugs like grisofulvin, spironolactone, these are the hydrophobic in nature and shows dissolution rate limited absorption. While the polar and hydrophilic drug like neomycin, it shows the permeation rate limited absorption. So this is about the definition of absorption and the various rate determining steps in the absorption of a drug from oral route of administration. Let us move towards the what is mean by dissolution and the solubility. Look at the figure. See the dissolution we can express as a 90% of drug gets dissolved after 45 minutes. While we are expressing the solubility in terms of 100 milligram per ml. So dissolution simply it is a mass transfer from the solid surface into the solution that is known as the dissolution. While the solubility it is nothing but a solute gets dissolved into the solution at a constant temperature, pressure and pH. Dissolution is the kinetic process and is quantified by its rate <coughs> while the solubility it quantifies the dynamic equilibrium state achieved when the rate of dissolution equals to the rate of precipitation. So we have seen the definition of dissolution and the Moving towards the dissolution rate. Before that, just we will see the what is mean by the intrinsic solubility. So intrinsic solubility, it is the maximum amount of solute dissolved in a given solvent under standard condition of temperature, pressure and pH. It is the stack property. Whereas the dissolution rate, it is the amount of solid substance that goes into the solution per unit time under standard conditions of temperature, pH and solvent composition and constant surface area. This is nothing but a dissolution rate. Moving towards the next point that is the theories of dissolution. There are three theories. Very first one is the diffusion layer model. Second one is the surface renewal theory. Third one that is the limited solvation theory. Generally, we are using the diffusion layer model to understand the concept of dissolution and to understand the various factors affecting to the dissolution. So moving towards the first theory that is the diffusion layer model. 
there are it is a two step very first step that is the formation of a diffusion when we are placing the solid into the bulk of solution there is a formation of a diffusion layer at a solid liquid interface and the second step that is the diffusion of a soluble solute from stagnant layer into the bulk of solution so in the first step there is a formation of a thin film or layer at solid liquid interface in a diffusion layer diffusion layer it is saturated with the drug and this first step is very rapid while in the second step that is diffusion of soluble solute from stagnant layer to bulk of solution it is little bit slower steps and which decides the dissolution of a drug from solid surface into the bulk of solution so it is best explained by the noise and witney equation which states that that is dc by dt that is rate of dis drug dissolution is equal to k cs minus cb dc by dt is the dissolution rate of drug k is the dissolution rate constant cs is the concentration of drug in stagnant layer while the cb is the concentration of drug in a bulk of solution with the help of this equation it indicates that the rate of dissolution is directly proportional to the concentration gradient furthermore the nurse and burner along with the fixed first law of diffusion modified the noise and witney equation and rate of dissolution is given by dak w by o divided by v into h in bracket cs minus cb so dc by dt it is the rate of dissolution d is the diffusivity of drug a is the surface area of dissolving solid k is the water oil partition coefficient v is the volume of dissolution medium h is the thickness of stagnant layer and cs minus cb is the concentration gradient with the help of this equation it is possible to understand the various factors which are going to affect the dissolution of drug as we are increasing the diffusivity area of area for the area of the dissolving solid then the partition coefficient the rate of dissolution gets increased whereas the thickness thickness of stagnant layer is inversely proportional to the rate of dissolution moving towards the sink condition so the rate of dissolution is equal to da divided by h into cs in the sink condition the amount of drug dissolved in the gastrointestinal fluid it is being absorbed into the systemic circulation and equation gets reduced to dc by dt is equal to da divided by h cs in this derivation of the equation it is assumed that d and h it is remains constant the static diffusion layer thickness is altered by the force of agitation at the surface of the dissolving tablet surface area a never remains constant as a powder granule or a tablet dissolves and it is difficult to obtain and accurate measure of a so in the same condition whatever the equation we will get it is the first order dissolution rate process for which the driving force is the concentration gradient this is true for in vitro dissolution with is characterized by non sink conditions the in vivo dissolution is rapid as sink conditions are maintained by absorption of a drug in systemic circulation that is cb becomes a zero and the rate of dissolution is maximum so under sink condition if the volume and surface area of the solid kept constant then the equation becomes dc by dt is equal to k and this equation 
indicates that the process is going to follow the zero order kinetics. Let us move towards the dissolution of a drug under sink condition and non-sink condition. Here I have shown the graph of concentration of drug dissolved versus the time. In the sink condition, we are getting the linear curve while in the non-sink condition, we, we are getting the curve curvy linear. So, in the sink condition, there is a linear relationship exists between the time and concentration of concentration of dissolved drug. While in the case of non-sync condition, it follows the first order kinetics. So let us move towards how to achieve the sync condition because sync condition in vitro sync conditions are very important. In the view, it is possible to maintain by absorbing the dissolved drug into the systemic circulation. So, in the case of vitro situation, it is possible to maintain the sink condition by bathing the solid in a fresh solvent from time to time. The second approach by increasing the volume of dissolution fluid. Third approach that is removing the dissolved drug by partitioning. Fourth approach by addition of water miscible solvents. And fifth approach by adding the adsorbent. So these are the ways by which uh, we can maintain the sink condition in the vitro dissolution. Yes, in the case of uh, equation given by the noise and Whitney, it is assumed that the dissolving surface area, dissolving surface area having the constant surface area. But actually in the process of dissolution, the surface area is not constant. Here is the Higson and Crowell propose the equation which takes into account the particle size decreases and which changes in the surface area. So the, cube, the equation is cube root of W0 minus cube root of W is equal to Kt. So W0 it is the original mass of drug. W is the mass of drug remaining to dissolve at a time t and Kt is the dissolution rate constant. So this is about the diffusion layer model which is widely accepted and used to understand the process of dissolution. So as per the diffusion layer model initially there is a formation of a stagnant layer and furthermore from the stagnant layer the drug moves into the drug gets diffused into the bulk of solution. Let us move towards the second theory. Dankward's model. Dankward doesn't approve that there is the existence or formation of a stagnant layer at a solid liquid interface. He proposed there is a turbulence in the dissolution medium exists at solid liquid interface. Dankward takes into account the eddies or packets that are present in the agitated fluid. So these are the eddies or packets which are present in the agitated fluid which reach at a solid liquid interface, absorb the solute by diffusion mechanism and carries into the bulk of solution. These packets get continuously replaced by the new one and exposed to new solid surface each time. Thus, the theory is called as a surface renewal theory. The Dankworth model is expressed by the equation V dc by dt is equal to dm by dt is equal to A in bracket Cs minus Cb square root of gamma d where the m is the mass of solid dissolved gamma is the rate of surface renewal. So this is about the Dankworth model. Let us move towards the third theory interfacial barrier model. There is the existence of intermediate concentration at the 
interface as a result of solvation mechanism and is a function of solubility. So, interfacial ba barrier model is expressed by the equation G is equal to Ki Cs minus Cb. G is the dissolution rate per unit area and Ki is the effective interfacial transport constant. So, these are the theories which are widely used to understand the process of dissolution. That is the film theory. Second one is the Dankward model. Third one is the interfacial barrier model. In the case of Dankward model, there is a formation of the empty packets, ED currents which are responsible for the dissolution of drug. And in the case of interfacial barrier model, it is uh, due to the solubility of the drug. Let us move towards the various factors which are going to affect the dissolution and uh, dissolution rate. There are three important factors which are going to affect the process of dissolution. Very first one, physiochemical properties of drug. Second, that is dissolved dosage form factors. Third one, that is the drug stability. So the physical chemical properties of the drug like salt formation, then the particle size and effective surface area, polymorphism, amorphism, hydrate, solvates, then the stability of the drug, then the polarity. So these are the few, few physical chemical properties of the drug which are going to affect the dissolution. Apart from these, the dosage form related factors that is the excipients, then manufacturing variables, then the type and nature of dosage form is also going to affect the dissolution and dissolution rate. Also, the drug stability is going to affect the dissolution and dissolution rate. In the coming session, we will see in detail the various factors affecting to drug dissolution and dissolution rate. Thank you. Thank you very much.